the entrance pools. Um, it's where all the kids learn to swim, you know. Um, unfortunately, I was in the, um, I never really graduated out of the tap holes back then. I was a, not a great swimmer, but. The entrance bars, we, we learnt to swim there, and we'd go to swimming lessons at the entrance bars on a Sunday morning. And that there, and that's, that was only one bar then, the big one, and then eventually they put in the two smaller ones. I learnt to swim at the entrance bath. My mum was on the committee for me during that was the early 60s and that. And the reason they're there was done in that 1936-37-38 period. We had money granted to Erin and Shire Council uh, for unemployment relief. So that's the reason those baths, one of the reasons are, are, are there. Interesting. I'm um, Don Campbell. I'm a resident of uh, the entrance for some 40 odd years, 48, 50 years. I've uh, been involved in uh, the Amateur Swimming Club and the Tugra Tufts over those period of years. And I'm Jim Mark, I'm the secretary of the Tugra Tufts. As I say, I'm only a blow in here, so. <laughs> Hi, I'm Noel. Um, lived in the area for nearly 48 years and been involved with uh, the surf club, the Tiger Tufts and the Entrance Amateur Swimming Club. And hi, I'm Diane. Um, I'm a relative newcomer. I've only been on the coast for about 20 years, or at the entrance area, 20 years. I'm currently involved with the Amateur Swimming Club and the Surf Club. I'm a historian for both of them and just taking on registrar of the Surf Club as well. It's a big thing in the club to uh, swim every Sunday right through the winter season without missing a swim. And if you manage that, you usually get a presentation. And uh, if you go away, if you swim at another club, if you, like, if you, if you can't swim at the Tufts, you can swim at another club as long as you get a letter covering it to say that you did swim on that particular day. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, some of us Don here, he's, he went for 26 years or something without missing a Sunday swim. You gotta swim. You gotta swim. There's all sorts of excuses yeah. and uh, but it's very it's it's we're very strict on it because it's it's the place place it so highly and that, that we have we've got to be strict, you know, there's no excuse. If you don't swim you don't swim and that's that's it, you know, there's no can say, oh my mother died or something, that's just bad luck if that happens. Yeah, I enjoyed it. You just keep going and I was lucky that my help uh, stood up and I had a passing wife, she used to say, well, go on, away you go, and things like that. But we, we have, as I say, we have 100, over 100 members, and we average between 20 and 30 swimmers that swim every, you know, get their 100% of the year. The surf club was there first, and as a way and means of keeping um, for surf club members to keep active and to keep swimming. From that grew the Tugra Tufts so that they were maintaining um, their fitness levels and also that social aspect in the off season. Originally started by the entrance surf club members that didn't want to play football in early days. They, were, they come and started a winter swimming club at the pools. Just to keep fit, so that's how it all started. Well, we, when we formed uh, the club, uh, we uh, had a chap, George Dwight, he had a guide dog in the, in the area, he used to live at North Entrance. Anyhow, they were doing some fundraising and we gave them a donation and that's how it started. We, ever since we've been donating to the Guide Dog Association. The money was raised through a fine session and, uh, where uh, members Robbing their other their mates and everything like that for <laughs> odd things they do and wrong and like get fined for speeding and all that. Or they, they've uh, come in and, and gone to sleep in the lounge and spilt their beer or whatever, you know. And that's how we, yeah, and we're still going strong. We give them $2,000 donation this year towards the guide dogs. Because a lot of the fines there, they say, how the bloody hell do you know anything about that? It's amazing. <laughs>
Yeah, they might be way out of the town, some of them dogmen, you know. Yeah. As long as we can uh, stand upright, I reckon we'll be, uh, we'll be, we'll be down there still. As long as I can remember, it, it's been up there on the top. I often sat, sat there and, and viewed the, the ocean and the, uh, the pool there. It was built in 1936 and situated on the headland overlooking the Baths. And it was named after Mrs Edith Ring, uh, who died in 1933. She resided where the Oceanfront Motel is today. Her husband George Andrew Ring, an Englishman, was a tailor by trade. Edith loved the view and liked to sit on the corner and watch the ships passing, the moods of the sea and just rest. George decided to construct the seats in position where his wife liked to sit. After her death, in memory of his wife, George handed the Edith Ring memorial seats to Wyongshire Council to be held in trust for the people. During World War II, rumour had it that the rest was used to signal German submarines off the entrance and that a family had actually been taken into custody due to their suspicious activities.